So hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our Badger Talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the Badgers here at Wildwood, so let's introduce them. Badgers are one of Britain's best known and most iconic wild animals. They even feature on some of the signs here at Wildwood. But relatively few people have ever seen one. And that's because they're quite shy animals that mainly come out at night. At Wildwood, we currently have four badgers, two boys and two girls. The girls are Daisy and Rodney, while the boys are called Freddy and Marmite. Rodney is the eldest of the family, uh, born in 2010, so nine years of age. She's the sassiest of the badgers. She acts like she's always in charge and she tends to do the most digging. Freddy is the next eldest. He was born in 2012, so he's now eight years of age. He's the friendliest of the badgers. Uh, he quite happily comes up to his keepers. He scent marks them and he basically wants to be fussed like a puppy. Daisy is seven years old. She was born in 2013 and she's the most skittish of the four. She very rarely goes inside the badger building only when the weather is really, really bad. So high winds, flooding, or heavy snow. Even then, she'll nip back outside if she hears anyone coming. Youngest of the team is Marmite, just four years old, uh, the baby of the family. Like Daisy, Marmite is quite skittish, uh, but he does enjoy snuggling up with Freddy. In the wild, badgers live to about six or ten years of age, but in captivity they can easily reach their teens. And males are known as boars, females are known as sows, the youngsters are known as cubs, and a group of badgers is known as a clan. The badger family consists of about 11 different species, including the North American badger and the notorious honey badger of Africa. The type that we have here at Wildwood are the European or Eurasian badgers. They have a massive range in the wild. They're not only found in Ireland and Britain, they're found right across Europe, north into Scandinavia, south into Greece and Turkey, and west into Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, and all the way into China. No one's too certain where the name badger comes from. Some people think it's from a 16th century word, bajered, which means to wear a badge, and that it refers to the white markings on the badger's head. Other people think it comes from the French word becher, which means digger. In Britain, the old word for badger was a brock, and that comes from the Celtic word for grey. You can still find it today in certain place names, like Brockhampton and Brockhurst. Badgers belong to a family of mammals known as mustelids. In fact, European badgers are the largest mustelids in Britain. Mustelids are probably better known as the weasel family, and something you see with most of them are very distinctive, long, flexible bodies. With the best will in the world, um, badgers can't be described like that. Um, they are seriously chunky animals. And that's because they've adapted to a lifestyle of digging and tunneling. Badgers spend most of their day in a network of tunnels and chambers known as a set, safe from harm or disturbance. Some sets can be over a century old, with more than 300 metres of tunnels and over a hundred entrances and exits. When you look at the badger, it is brilliantly adapted for this lifestyle. In Winterwatch 2020, they actually recorded badgers moving rocks weighing 20 kilograms. That's twice their own weight just to get food underneath. They have short but strong legs. Uh, they can be surprisingly fast in a short sprint. Uh, they have muscular wedge-shaped bodies. This is for squeezing through the tunnels and a fairly short tail to stop it being clogged up with dirt. 
Even the skull shows adaptations to living underneath the ground. It is unusually thick to protect the badger's brain if it hits its head in the tunnels. It's worth mentioning that badgers are surprisingly fussy when it comes to keeping the set clean. They'll regularly drag in dry bedding material, so things like straw, hay, bracken and leaves, and pull out and get rid of old bedding material. And they never go to the toilet in the set. They have proper latrine sites outside. Usually when you talk about animal senses, you get to say how much better they are than humans. A peregrine falcon can spot a mouse from a mile away. Uh, the wolves, they can hear another wolf howling five to ten miles away. Then there's badgers. Badgers do not have very good eyesight. It's not much better than ours. They don't see in colour and their night vision is nearly as bad as ours is. Um, when you look at a badger, this is not a live badger or a real badger, this is a soft cuddly toy. But when you look at the colours of a badger, most of the body is grey. The face and the head though is white with two distinctive black stripes across the face. It is believed that they look like this, so when they're in the darkness of their tunnels, they can see if another badger is coming in the opposite direction. Their eyesight is that bad. Their hearing is pretty much the same as ours as well. But the truth is that the small eyes and the small ears are adaptations to living underground. If you think of many nighttime animals, like cats or owls, they tend to have large eyes. That's to catch any available light, even the faint light from the stars. But if you live underground, there is no light at all. There's no point in having large eyes. In fact, if you're living underground and you're digging, large eyes are a really bad idea. For one thing, you're probably going to get dirt in them. For another thing, no light to see by. And if you wanted to have good hearing and big ears, there's a good chance they could scrape against the walls of your tunnel. Ouch. The badger's main sense is smell. One source claims that their sense of smell is 700 to 800 times better than a human's. It's how they find their food. It's also how they pick up on potential threats. But they also use smell to communicate. Badgers have large scent glands at the base of their tail. They also have scent glands, small scent glands, between their toes. So effectively, wherever they walk, they leave a scent trail. They will scent mark their territories to warn off any other badgers. Each badger has a unique scent. And when they're in a family, they will scent mark each other. And this develops a unique clan or family smell. And that's the reason why Freddy scent marks his keepers. Uh, he's actually saying that they're part of his family. One of the surprising things about badgers is they have a very extensive vocal range, which means they make lots of different types of call. A study published in 1999 identified at least 16 different types of call, all of them linked to very specific behaviours. Apparently, when a badger is threatened, it will give a deep growl. When it's fighting, it makes a low keckering noise. When they're surprised, they bark. When they're playing or in distress, they make a wickering sound. And when they're alarmed or frightened, they can give a piercing scream. Badgers are classed as Britain's largest land predators. But as this badger skull shows, that's not the full story. I should say, this is a skull that has come from a badger that died of natural causes. If you look at the teeth, at the front you have incisors, small nipping teeth. If you look at the side, we have the long pointed canine teeth. These are for stabbing and holding. But further back, these are molars. These are for crushing and grinding. This is not the skull of something that's a pure carnivore. 
Badgers are omnivores. They eat both meat and plants. And if this combination of teeth seems a bit familiar, these are the same tooth types that we have in our own mouths. Badgers aren't fast enough to hunt actively, so instead they forage. And the main part of a badger's diet is actually earthworms. At least half its diet will be nothing but earthworms. They can eat nearly 200 in a single night. And there's something very special there. If you go out to continental Europe and you find European badgers, they live on their own. They're solitary. Here in Britain, they tend to live in families, anything of six to ten. And the reason is down to the earthworms. We have a very rich soil in Britain. We also have a fairly damp, wet climate. That's perfect for earthworms. That means there's plenty of food for badgers. They can stay together. In Europe, not so much food. They have to spread out. They'll also eat large insects, so things like beetles, as well as breaking into the nests of wasps and bees. They're protected from stings because they have thick fur and tough skin. In late summer, they'll happily eat cereals, so things like wheat and oats. And in autumn time, they'll be eating fruit, berries, nuts and fungi. In addition, they'll eat the eggs of ground nesting birds. They'll also take small mammals, frogs and even carrion, dead meat. There's one final clue in a badger's skull to do with its diet. And it's this ridge right at the back. This is known as the sagittal crest, and it's where the jaw muscles anchor. This is an unusually well-developed sagittal crest. If we compare this skull from the badger with this replica skull, made of plastic, from a lynx, although the lynx skull is larger, the crest at the back is much, much smaller. You see big sagittal crests in animals like brown bears and gorillas. This is telling us that the badger has a very, very strong bite. In point of fact, it's one of the few animals that can catch, kill and eat hedgehogs. They can literally bite into them. Hedgehogs are currently undergoing a decline in the wild, and the badgers are unfairly getting a lot of blame. In 2018, a report into the dropping numbers of hedgehogs in rural areas managed to prove that the main problem is loss of habitat. It's not the badger's fault. Understandably, with such an iconic animal, badgers have been part of folklore, legend and myth for centuries. Traditionally, badgers tend to be seen as being wise animals. If you think of old Mr. Badger in the famous story, The Wind in the Willows, there's even a legend that other animals would bring the stories, their stories, to the badger and tell the badger their stories so he could keep them safe. In heraldry, in coats of arms, the badger is used to symbolize determination. And that's something we even see in the present day. If you think of the Harry Potter stories, the symbol for Hufflepuff House is the badger, and the traits of Hufflepuff include patience and loyalty. When we get to medieval folklore, that's when you start to see some really weird stuff about badgers. It was believed that parts of a badger could be used medicinally, no truth whatsoever in that, for diseases and illnesses, including rheumatism, arthritis, and leprosy. It was believed that if you had a horse's bridle made of leather from a badger, or if you put badger fur into the bottom of your shoes, you would gain magical control over horses. Another strange belief was that uh, badger tails had holes in them, one for each year that the badger had been alive. But the all-time number one strange story was that Badgers had legs that were shorter on one side of their body than their other to help them walking around hills. If you're wondering, this is not true. Today, badgers in Britain are a protected species. They even have special laws passed in 1992 to protect not only themselves, but their sets. 
There are, however, various problems that they face in the wild. There's a very, very cruel and totally illegal sport known as badger baiting, where d badgers are dug out of their sets and made to fight dogs until they are killed. Unfortunately, it was once a traditional sport. Now it is completely illegal. More recently, um, there has been a lot in the news about badgers spreading bovine tuberculosis. And there have been a number of culls where the badgers are systematically and very carefully killed. Research has shown that although badgers do transmit bovine TV, the transmission rate seems to be fairly low. And culling, well, culling doesn't really help. In fact, it may increase transmission rates as new badgers migrate into the area. Strangely though, the big problem for badgers is road traffic collisions. And by that I mean that when they're crossing a motorway they get hit by a car, not that they actually crash the motor cars that they're driving. Currently it's believed that 20% of badger deaths each year are due to being hit by cars. One of the ways to avoid this is actually building bridges and underpasses. Badgers follow the scent trails and they tend to cross motorways at exactly the same spots. So by putting in special structures, they can actually cross with relative safety. We hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the badgers here at Wildwood. And we'd like to say thank you very much for listening.